Hi there, welcome to my shop. This is Jason at Geyser Wood Turner. In this video, I'd like to do a small wood turning project. The knob on my car stereo broke, so I'm gonna turn the replacement. Okay, so this is what my car stereo looks like without a knob. A little bit hard to operate. Here's the old knob. You can see where it's broken on the inside. And I'm going to just start to measure some depths. I've got 9 sixteenths tall, about 9 sixteenths on the outside diameter, a little bit bigger. Pretty close to 7 sixteenths on the inside. Then I'm going to measure a couple of depths. How far the recess is, and then all the way down to how far the shaft will go. Okay, I'm going to mark for center. And this is a piece of western soft maple that's very spalted and a little bit punky and it'll be a little bit hard to work with, but it'll be beautiful when I'm done. Okay, and I'm just going to mount that piece of wood between centers. Okay, just tighten up the tailstock and we'll be good to go. And you'll always want to start your lathe going slow and then bring it up to speed. And always wear a face shield just in case it flies out and hits you. And don't stand in the way when you start it. Okay, now we're gonna make it round by using our spindle roughing gouge. This is basically the only thing that you use this tool for is turning between centers like this. You can do a little shaping, but only between centers like this. You can't use this tool on the inside of a bowl. The tang on it is too weak for that. But it's great for doing this job. Okay, we're just going to check that piece and make sure that it's round. And it is. Okay, and now with a parting tool, I'm going to make a tenon on the end so that I can put that into my collet chuck. And I'm aiming for a 5 8 collet. In hindsight, I would have done it on the tailstock side instead of the headstock side so that I don't hit my drive center. You'll notice in a minute there'll be a little bit of a sound. And I hit my drive center a little bit. It just means I'll have to sharpen my tool. Okay, I'm measuring with some calipers to get to that 5 8 diameter when it slips over that tenon. I'm, I'll know I'm at my correct diameter. There we go. And I'm just going to generally smooth everything up here and make sure that it's the right size. Okay, now we'll take that out of there. I'm gonna pop out the drive center. And I'm gonna add my collet chuck. Now this is an adapter. I had my collet chuck before I bought my larger lathe, so I use an adapter with it now. It works great. OK, 
Okay, so we'll loosely set that in the collet, bring the tailstock up, and that'll help center it and keep it centered. Go ahead and tighten up that collet chuck. Okay, and we'll slowly bring that up to speed. I removed the tailstock. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. I was trying to get at the end, which I do, but you'll notice there's a lot of vibration in the sound. You'll especially notice it here as I try to screw that up a little bit. And here's where I notice that's still pretty loose in the collet. But we can fix that. We'll loosen it up a little bit, we'll bring the tailstock up, and tighten that chuck, we'll be good to go. Okay, now I'm going to set the depth of my knob. Aiming for about 9 16 a little bit over that. And when that slips over that little tenon, I'll know I'm at my depth. There we go. Now since I have the parting tool, I'm just going to use it to remove more material. and just slowly work my way down. And with my skew chisel, I'm going to do a planing cut just to smooth everything up and make it look really nice, especially right here on the end. Okay, we'll see how that looks. Here's where I noticed that I have a little bit of a jagged edge on the end little bit of tear out. So I'm going to use my parting tool to take some really light fine cuts on the end and try and clean that up and make a nice crisp edge. And that looks a lot better. Okay, now I'm going to mark the length of my knob and I'm just going to put a pencil line on there and then touch my pencil to that mark with the lathe moving and I'll put a line all the way around and I'm ready to drill the recesses okay so the first depth is a 7 16 Forstner bit and I'm going to go in about 3 16 which is about half the length of that blade on the end. And I've slowed down the lathe for this. I think I'm going a little bit over 1000 RPM. Okay, now we're going to drill for our shaft. And this drill bit is 11 sixteenths. It's a little bit smaller than what I needed, but 3 sixteenths was too large. If I had some metric drill bits, this would have been easier. And here's where I almost messed up. 
and you'll see that I change it up and put a piece of tape on the drill bit so that I know how deep I need to go. I, I almost put a hole through the end of the knob. Okay. Now it's time to define our knob. I brought a cone center up and put it inside the recesses that I drilled just for some support. And I'm going to take a 1 16th parting tool, very thin parting tool, and go in. I don't want to go all the way through. I want to leave some wood to be able to turn with. But I just want to define where the end of my knob is going to be. And then I will come in with my quarter inch spindle gouge and I'm just going to remove some wood and get it out of the way so that I can work on the knob. And now with that same spindle gouge I'm going to take really light cuts and work my way around that corner. And I'm rotating the tool and changing the bevel as I go in so that I get a nice round bead right there. And nice and easy until I get the look that I want. Now it's time to do a little bit of sanding. I'm going to start out with about a 120 and work my way through finer and finer grits. And I'll speed that up so you don't have to watch the sanding, that's the slow part. I went from 120 to 220 to a 400 grit. Now it's time to part off that knob and we'll turn it around and work on the nose. Again with the thin parting tool, I'm going to work that down. And I'm not going to do it right at the end, I'm going to leave a little bit of wood on the end so that the fibers don't tear and leave a hole in the end of my knob. I can always take that off later. Okay, now we're going to reverse our knob and put it on our waste block. So we're going to have to turn a tenon that will fit just perfectly. This is called a jam chuck. Okay, we're going to take it down a little bit and test fit, and that's not enough. It has to be just right. If you get it too loose, it won't stay on. If you get it too tight, you'll crack the piece that you're working on. It has to hold just right. And we'll give it another test fit. And one more test fit so you can see how tricky this is. That is too loose. I messed it up, so we're going to try again. Just cut that off with your parting tool and make another tenon. And we're almost there.
And so we'll just take a little bit off this time. Probably one more cut. Just kind of chew your way down until you have it just right. Okay, and that's a great fit. Now we'll get to work on the end of our knob and really light cuts here because we don't want that to fly off of our jam chuck. This is a quarter inch spindle gouge here. You could use any spindle gouge. This one just takes really light, small cuts. And I'm going to flip it on the side and use the wing to define the face of our knob. And that puts pressure towards the headstock, which will help keep that knob on our jam chuck. And then we're going to do a little bit more sanding the same way we did before, going through all the grits. And one little final trick is take some of the shavings that you collected and rub those on that piece and it'll burnish it a little bit and make it a little shiny. And we're ready to start applying finish. So we're going to start with a 50-50 lacquer mixture. This is deft clearwood finish gloss and lacquer thinner. 50-50 mix. One part to one part. And put that on a towel. Always use a paper towel so that the fibers don't get hung up in your lathe. And just put that on and wipe it off with a dry piece of the towel. And I'm going to put on two coats for good measure to let that soak in. It'll harden in the wood and work like a sanding sealer. And there we go, we're ready to take that off the lathe. Okay, here are our knobs side by side, the old and the new. You can tell the new one's just a little bit taller, which is good, I don't mind. Here's where I lucked out, and on the shaft of the car stereo, I found this D spring clip that fits right over, and I could fit it inside my knob, it worked great. Okay, now we're gonna put the final finish on. This is a deft clear wood finish, a spray lacquer that's gloss, and I did about three coats. Here's the final product on the car stereo. It works good and looks great. Thanks for turning with me in my shop today. I love to do wood turning videos. Come along with me, hit the subscribe button now. See you next time.